Welcome to Community Connections. I'm Nicole Young, Coordinator of Communications and Media Partnerships for Clay County District Schools. This month on Community Connections, we're going to take a deeper dive into the district sales tax referendum, which is called EDFIRST. EDFIRST stands for Education, Facilities, Infrastructure, Restricted Sales Tax, and it's going to be on the ballot this November. The goal today is to learn more about what the sales tax means for the district and the community. Today we have Mr. Jim Fossa, who's a Supervisor of Operations and Safety and Security, and Mrs. Bryce Ellis, who is the Assistant Superintendent of Operations. And they're going to give us a deeper look into what this means for our community. So Mr. Fossa, if you can just give us the nuts and bolts of kind of what the sales tax is and what it's going to be used for. Sure, Nicole. Thanks for having us here today. But the, inf the infrastructure sales tax is a half cent sales tax on goods and services that um, not only do the residents of Clay County pay, but for anybody coming into Clay County pay. So this would be something that when we gather all these funds in, that we would be able to take care of the school's infrastructure needs. And it's only for infrastructure needs. So we're talking like air conditioning systems, we're talking about building envelope, uh, refurbishing bathrooms, the, the things that the kids need to be able to have a first class education. And we want to be able to provide that to our students, a first class education in buildings that are in great shape. Awesome. And so, Mr. Fossil, you mentioned that this can be used for maintenance and new growth. So, um, Mrs. Ellis, as the <laughs> Assistant <laughs> Superintendent of Operations, I know you have a lengthy list of projects. Um, what are some of the things that are top of mind that really have to get fixed soon? Right. So, we have over $300 million in need right now for maintenance and facilities. Um, I mean, just air conditioning alone, people don't understand that one unit at Orange Park High School is $1.5 million. That's just one school. We have these problems across the district. There's 42 schools. Uh, so any other modernizing, mechanical, electrical, plumbing, we've got everything on the list. Um, not only that, we've got relocatables that we need to replace. We can use this sales tax to build new classroom wings and replace those relocatables and get our kids in real classrooms. Um, and again, it's, it's facility restricted, so it can only be used for maintenance and new growth and buildings. And we'll have an oversight committee um, that would oversee every project that we have. It's not something that our department's just going to say, hey, we want to go do this because we want to do it. We're going to do it with a committee that says, yes, this is okay to spend this on, it's approved, um, so that the community feels like they have a say in it too. They can be in touch with the committee. Um, and I, I think that's important to know that that it's not, it's not just going to be us doing it. It's going to be a community effort. Right. And so you mentioned that um, there is funding for all schools. So this is really going to be equitable for the entire district. Can you talk about um, kind of how that's laid out? I know we have some older schools versus newer schools. So what does that look like as far as projects? Absolutely. So. We have, right now it's going to be worse first. Um, oldest schools are going to have more on their list than the newer schools, obviously. But we have gone to every school and facility, and we have a breakdown of every school. And the more we get into this, we'll talk about, and we can show um, kind of our massive spreadsheet and, and pie charts. But we were as equitable as possible in, in meeting each school's needs and modernizing, and, and again, worse first. So we'll, we'll do what we can. So it's not only the maintenance of new schools, it's new growth. We have a lot of people coming into our county. You've seen all of the developments and neighborhoods going up. And I know, Mr. Fossa, you are well-versed in the population boom that's happening here in Clay. Can you talk about what the district's plans are in the next five to seven years to build schools? Sure. Um, so as, um, as the planner, I actually sit on Clay County's planning commission. So I have a voting um, seat on any of the growth that comes in. The First Coast Expressway, as you've seen, is snaking through Clay County. All you have to do is go along Blanding, go along Henley, go along uh, Route 13, go along 17, and also where Shands Bridge is, you can see it, it's coming. And with that, we're going to be needing probably five to seven new schools, probably in the next uh, five to ten years. Um, there's a huge development that's going on down in south of uh, Green Cove, and that's actually being built by the Park Group, which is actually the same developer that did Nocatee. So we're looking at a huge development down there. I haven't even touched on Lake Asbury at all. And if you can look at Lake Asbury along Sand Lake Road, there are at least six developments coming in and on Henley. So there's a huge need right there for um, elementary schools 
and even in the Two Creeks area. So we're looking at a large amount of growth. You can look at the expressway as what the Buckman Bridge was to Orange Park when it came in. This is what the expressway is going to be to the rest of Clay County. Wow, so it's really going to connect a lot of different people and bring a lot of people uh, through our county. And so the sales tax really is a way that everyone can contribute. I mean, you have visitors coming through the expressway, mm -hmm. and then you have obviously residents that are buying within the county. Um, so there's a lot of growth happening, uh, which is really exciting. Uh, Mrs. Ellis, we're going to have you address kind of the elephant in the room, the big question, what if the sales tax doesn't pass? What will the district yeah. do? Well, gosh, I hope that we don't have to deal with that. But if we do, we're going to have to find alternative sources of funding. Um, it's unfortunate we would have to maybe look at increasing impact fees and property taxes. Um, and then, again, we're just going to be dealing with aging schools. Even even doing that, we're not going to meet the need. It's just, it's it's too much. Um, we really need this half cent sales tax. And and it's it's not a lot to ask for. I don't think it's it's equitable in the fact that we're not asking just property owners to pay for it. It's anybody coming through, like Mr. Fossa has said. Um, and it's we're looking at 50 cents per hundred dollars spent in the county. Um, so uh, to me, I don't I don't think that's a lot to ask for for our students and our community. Definitely. And so is there anything else you guys would like to touch on to inform voters or the community about any other um, things about the sales tax that they may not know? Sure. Well, again, I'd like to touch on what, what uh, Ms. Ellis was saying is that when you think of what's going on over in St. John's County, every time you go over there for dinner or to any of the restaurants, you're paying for their schools. So we should be doing the same thing here. So there's all these th traffic that starts coming through in the new expressway. Why not have folks outside? help pay for our schools. Why put it on the backs of all of Clay County residents? Um, you can see right now that Duval County is trying it as well, and there are over 25 different counties in the state of Florida that have a half cent sales tax. That is the best way to fund your schools and the most equitable way to fund your schools. All right, wonderful. Well, thank you guys so much for being here today and informing us about um, half cent sales tax and what it means for our community. It's really, really important um, for them to know before they go to the ballot in November. Mm -hmm. Um, and so if you want more information, we are continually updating our website at oneclay.net slash edfirst, and we will continue to post and update as we get closer to November. Thank you so much for tuning in, and we'll see you next time on Community Connection.